What is up, guys? Today, we're going to be talking more about getting certified in cybersecurity. Um, I know you guys hear certs and you hear dollar signs. Uh, a lot of certs are expensive, especially the good ones like the OSCP. Uh, the CompTIA certs are kind of a middle of the road price, but they're still expensive per test and the training and the learning programs and the continuing education units. It's just uh, it's a rabbit hole, especially if you don't have a job in cybersecurity yet and you don't have an employer that's going to pay for it. What do you do? Well, so ISC2, uh, the, they're best known for the CISSP, which is pretty well-known cert, especially for government workers, for military, for anyone that's doing any work with the government. Um, the CISSP is kind of a baseline cert. Um, it's actually, if we go certs, we go to DOD approved baseline certs. We can see that the CISSP gives you IAT level three, it gives you IAM level three, it gives you CSSP incident responder. Hold on. Nope, it doesn't. Um, but it does give you a lot of level three. Um, and then it gives you, ah, here it is. Level two IASE, IASAE2 and then IASAE1. Um, and then these certs also count for the lower levels as two as well. So what is certified in cybersecurity by ISC2 and why is it so cool? It's free. That's, that's really all there is to it. Uh, free exam and free training. They give you a training course for free it goes over all of the levels, like all the different domains that the test covers. Um, the only thing you do have to pay for is once you are an ISC2 member, you have a $50 um, like renewal fee uh, every three years, I think. So after you pass the Certified in Cybersecurity uh, Cert, the CC, you do have to pay 50 bucks, but if you don't pass it, you don't have to pay anything. So you're not paying for the exam, you're not paying for the training, you're only paying for once you pass it to become an ISC2 member. Um, the CC is an entry level exam. It's fairly easy. Um, if you have your Security Plus um, or your Net Plus, I would highly encourage you to just read over the learning materials and then take it. If you don't have one of those certs, one of the entry level certs, I would highly encourage you to go deeply through the learning, watch all of the videos. Um, I can actually show you guys real quick what the learning platform looks like. Just go to my courses. So the course has different modules. Uh, let's go into network security. The course has videos. It has more videos. Um, it has learning objectives and quizzes throughout. And then it has readable information. Where's the readable stuff? Um, little mini like knowledge checks to make sure that you are understanding the information. And if you do well on these knowledge checks, you're going to do well on the exam. I did the self-paced training on Tuesday while at work. We were doing something that didn't require my full attention. And so I went through the entire CC self-paced training. Um, it probably took me four hours and then I didn't watch any of the videos. I just went through the learning objectives, read through it, took the practice exam, and then I scheduled my exam at a testing center for the next day, Wednesday. And then today, record the day of recording is Thursday. So within two days, I 
did the online training, got certified, paid my dues, became an ISC2 member, and now I'm making a video about it to tell you guys that it's super easy and something that is very attainable. And if you don't pass the first time, you just take it again. It was free. Go through the training one more time, take the exam one more time, and it's a good learning experience. It's a good way to take proctored exams at a testing location and not be super scared that you're going to lose out on 300 or $400 worth of exam materials. It gets you ready for the process of taking your CISSP or taking your pen test plus or your CYSA plus because they all, all the testing centers proctor all of the same exams. So the same testing center that you're taking your CC at, you can probably take your security plus at. So because COVID's going away, the online testing is going away and we're going back to the in on-site in-person testing centers. Um, let's just go through this question. We'll go through this question real quick. What is the type of malware that encrypts files and demands payment? That's a pretty easy one. We're going to go with ransomware. We know that phishing is scam email where they send you a link. It might look like a Google Drive link or it might look like it's from PayPal. You click it, you log in, they grab your login credentials and then now we have a security incident on our hands. We know that a, a denial of service attack or a DDoS is just a bunch of uh, different computers, or in this case, denial of service could just be one computer, sending a bunch of traffic to a server or a website to make sure that it cannot um, provide service to its users. And then we know that an APT is an advanced persistent threat. So we're going to check our answer, and we can see that we were correct. It's a type of malware that encrypts files. And then we were also correct on our other explanations. Which threats are directly associated with malware? So ransomware is malware. Trojan is malware. DDoS is not. Phishing could be and then a virus is malware. So what is malware? Malware is just malicious software. So an APT might use malicious software, but it's it's not directly associated with malware. Whereas when you hear ransomware, Trojan virus, you directly associate them with malware. A Trojan is just a file that looks like it's what it's supposed to be, but then when you actually open it up, it has some nefarious malicious intent behind the real uh, program so say you're trying to download 7-zip and then you get wanna cry um, ransomware encrypts all your files and then a virus is just um, any ooh it's self-replicating i always get virus and worm mixed up go ahead and uh, do some research on your own but uh, yep, virus is associated with malware because it is self-replicating and it spreads without the consent of a user. I definitely still look up worm. Here's the reading and then you get some reading, which I enjoy reading a little bit more than videos. You guys are here watching my video, so I'm going to guess that you guys like video based content a little bit more than reading. I can't read like the cert practice books but uh, if you give me a short little paragraph or two and then break it up with some questions and stuff it's i think they're the way they're doing the self-paced training is is pretty good we get to learn about intrusion detection systems and how they monitor traffic uh, send alerts uh, da -da -da. preventing threats using firewalls um, it's all very basic cybersecurity information, some network security. Uh, let's go back and look at all of the modules here. Security principles, incident response. Um, the only thing you guys might not know, like off the top of your head, because 
People don't always associate cybersecurity with business continuity and disaster recovery. Um, chapter two did get me a little bit just remembering the differences between business continuity and disaster recovery, making sure you know that business continuity is keeping the business, the core business principles running, the core like um, services running during a disaster. And then disaster recovery is bringing your services back to like full function, making sure that everyone's back in the office, uh, all your services are back up, everything is back to how it was before the disaster. Access control, just making sure um, people who have access have it and people who don't need access anymore or shouldn't have access don't. Uh, going into different concepts like physical security versus logical security versus deterrence, um, Network security, security operations. Uh, let's go into security operations a little bit just to see what it's called, see what it's doing. So understanding system hardening. So making sure that services that don't need to be running on certain computers aren't running. Um, and then making sure that your closing ports you're not using, um, you're regularly checking to make sure that um, only the applications that are supposed to be on there are on there and the applications that are supposed to be on there are up to date. Um, best practices, um, understanding policy versus regulation versus procedure. So procedure is a a step by step um, instructions on how to carry out a security policy, whereas a security policy is something your company requires um, like an eight character password or, um, like 30 day password expiration, uh, even though you shouldn't be doing that anymore. Um, and then security awareness training, an informed user is a more secure user, making sure that your sales department understands the, um, the consequences that their actions may have, making sure that they are informed about the latest phishing attempts and how to tell if an email is scam or legitimate. Um, yeah. I really hope you guys take advantage of this um, free cybersecurity training and a free cert at the end to put on your resume to get you one step closer to getting your CISSP, to getting a job in cybersecurity, to moving from entry level to mid-level. Um, it's a great opportunity and I just wanted to share it with you guys. I hope you guys liked it. Um, if you did like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, give it a like, uh, get subscribed, and uh, I'll see you guys all later. <laughs>